Welcome back to Chatter on the Wire. We're going to take a look at uh, my latest melt. And this was actually from this weekend. Uh, I took a half day off and decided to utilize all of the um, lawnmower parts that a buddy of mine had given me. Here's a quick view of those. And we'll make a very quick uh, fly through on the first probably half an hour to 45 minutes as we were waiting for things to heat up. Here you can see the initial uh, crucible full of aluminum parts. And here in just a second you will see what happens when you are not paying attention and you have not added any air to this. You know if this was a gas it would be one thing but when you're trying to burn with uh, charcoal and wood without injecting air into it doesn't work real well. So I use wood from the property to run this uh, most weeks. Every now and then I will use uh, brick charcoal, but uh, using the wood here works quite well as long as I keep the keep it to a minimum of how many little branches I put in at any one point in time. So I decided to preheat a few of the aluminum pieces I was about to melt. My original goal was to drop these into the crucible and so I didn't want them to freeze up the metal that was already there. Here we see me attempt to set up a cheap old camera that was sitting around. Unfortunately at the time I didn't realize it only had a 250 meg video card in it. So this didn't work out very well as you can imagine. So at this time I've been outside for about an hour uh, to get everything in the foundry up to temperature, get this first melt done, and at this point in time I'm skimming off quite a bit of dross. Um, with aluminum cans I'm used to all the garbage there, but unlike with aluminum cans, we didn't have a lot of burnt material from the paint and the plastic in it. Um, I am going to reattempt to melt this at some time in the future. I ended up collecting probably close to five pounds of this over the course of the melt this day. Okay, let's stoke up this fire and dump the second set of aluminum in here and hopefully this melt goes a lot faster than the last. So here's what happens when you put too much wood in. You smoke out yourself and your neighbors. So it's been about 15 minutes since I finished the last melt and I'm getting to this point here. Uh, this is much better than with the aluminum can since I'm able to drop that top on and let it gather and keep in most of that heat. We'll fill the crucible back up and go for round three here shortly. Okay, we're up to pour number three here. Uh, it took about 20-25 minutes in between. I'm not entirely sure why this one took a bit longer. All I can figure is the charcoal or wood burnt out a little faster this time. Uh, I have 
ended up cranking the air up too high on that uh, hair dryer, which does seem to make a bit of a difference, but uh, not as much as I would have originally thought. Here we're kicking off pour number four. This is a good 15 minutes, almost 20, uh, from the last pour. And I have kind of noticed as I'm looking through this, uh, it really depends on how long I take in between um, the pour and getting the crucible back in for how much heat I've lost during that time frame on how uh, much longer it takes the foundry to get back up to temperature and for us to get onto the next pour. So for port number five, we did quite well. It was just over 10 minutes this time. Um, not sure if I have a nice coal base finally built back up or what the deal is, but it was a very short break in between pours this time. So pour number six was another 15 minutes. Um, if you look back, uh, when I l put all that extra wood in there, I did put way too much in and extremely smoked myself out that time around. So at this time I've almost emptied out my second five gallon bucket full of uh, small aluminum parts that I had. I also decided it was time to add some charcoal briquettes. Um, I was hoping that this would lessen some of the smoke that I was getting from using the wood pieces. So now we're up to pour number seven. This was only about 10 minutes after the previous pour. Um, the foundry seems to be holding heat quite well at this point in time and is making this very quick. So as we're finishing out this bucket, I decided to pour the last little junk that was in there. Um, as you can see, it starts smoking when it's in the crucible. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. So pour number eight here. I can't tell you exactly how long it was in between because the camera screwed up and went from like number 45 to like number two. So I'm not sure if I actually lost 15 plus minutes of time in there or if it was just uh, screwed up somewhere along the way. But I believe this is probably about 10 to 15 minutes again. So 
So as you can see, as I'm doing pour number nine here, there is very little shade left for me. Um, I believe it's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside at this point in time. There is a nice breeze, thankfully, but I've been at this for just shy of, let's see, about four hours at this point in time. Uh, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, and I've had a couple pieces of bread, some cheese, and I think a banana so far today. So at this point in time, I'm really starting to drag and wondering how much longer I can keep this up for the day. The one problem, though, is the foundry is extremely warm and it's melting things quickly. So it's really hard to give up regardless of what uh, your body's feeling at this point. We've now hit pour number 10. I'm really debating how much longer I can make it. My plan at this point in time is to call it quits about 5 p.m. when my neighbors are all getting home uh, in case they wanted to be out in their backyard because when I'm doing this, it does tend to really blow into the neighbor uh, just to the south of our house. So at this point, it's a little after 5 p.m., um, and while I had planned on being finished, I couldn't give up at this point. I wanted to get at least one more uh, melt done after this, uh, bring it up to a nice round, maybe not a number of 12. So since I wanted to do one last melt, I grabbed one of the larger pieces, I think this is the largest piece that I decided would fit in my crucible, and dropped it in and let it go. So I was able to make 12 different pours today. While this wasn't the longest melting session I've done, I think this is the most uh, aluminum of or at least ingots that I've been able to pour during all the different times I've been doing this. So it was a very successful day. Thanks for joining me. So all said and done, I had uh, about three fourths of a five gallon bucket full of ingots. You can see that here. Or you can also see a nice stack of them. That's two rows. Um, there was a few places in there I had to double up the ingots just because they were such small pours. All said and done, I had, let's see, what was that, 47.1 uh, pounds. Um, that's including the five gallon bucket, but, uh, but that's clean aluminum. And I have, I believe it was 12.1 pounds of slag, which uh, was not something, or sorry, 12.7 pounds which I didn't realize it was that much, but again, that is also including that metal bucket.